A word for our listeners. Season 2 of Masks of Nyarlathotep is set in the 1930s and 40s. We will be using terms and sayings from those times, including some that could be considered offensive. It's not our intention to offend. We merely wish to offer as accurate a view of the time period as possible. Welcome to Masks of Nyarlathotep, a Nerds Domain gaming podcast. Join us each week as our investigators uncover the corruption of the mythos in World War II. Starring George Chimples, Rob Walker, Phil Durham, Shirley Nedswicky, and Justin Kimmett, with Matt Quiet running the table as Keeper. Eldritch evils and crazed Nazi cultists await you just beyond this music. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Nerds Domain Presents Masks of Nyarlathotep. I'm Matt and I am here with Shirley. Hello. And Phil. Hello. <laughs> we are joined by two very special guests uh, deep from uh, the uh, what the water Art. region of Texas. <laughs> That's what it is right now. <laughs> yeah. We've got uh, John Thompson. Hello. Uh, who will be joining us uh, for his first time tonight. And then Roxy Thompson. Uh, Hello. Who will be re uh, coming back as uh, Major Charles Sitwell um, after the debacle in in Germany, <laughs> whatever that was? That went really well, didn't it, Roxy? Yeah, I'm I'm I I am barely alive, or last I checked, because that um, fixed it all. Let's uh, let's do some of that. That's a good question. Uh, so why don't you roll two d three? And I know you're going to say I could just roll a d six, but that's not as much fun. Let's see. That is a two and a three. So you can heal back three, and then I'll let you do it again. You'll have two weeks of rest. Before okay, the, so the I take the, the the larger of the two. Oh, I'm sorry. That should be a total of three, so you'll you'll heal back three, and then you'll roll it again. So um, 2d3 again. And that is uh, two twos. So four. And you'll heal okay. back, you'll heal back four. Uh, so, so could I not do five the last time? What do you mean? I had a two and a three. Oh, you had a two? Wow, I heard a one and a three. So, yeah, or one and a two. Yeah, no, you can do five. That's fine. Yeah, heal five. Okay, good. Thank you. Wow, five and four is nine. That should get you most of the way there. I'm, yeah, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. <clears throat> um, so, we are at the tail end of season two. This is going to be the last episode for the A-team um, for season two. Uh, this is going to be kind of the introduction into season three. Um, so... You are all in uh, merry old England. Uh, we with us. Well, we, yes. Well, I guess is the character creation going up before this? It'll be up on the Patreon site. So if you want to hear the character creation for Phil's character, um, it will be up on the character on uh, the Patreon site as well as our seventh edition uh, Octon Cthulhu character sheets that that were built by Roxy, and all of the the uh, the blank character sheets for that that are e- able to be downloaded and then all of the character sheets for our characters will be uploaded there starting in season three. Um, so that was a good question. All of our, all of our general character creation sessions will be going up on Patreon and it should be up sometime around the time that season three starts, probably right about the time this comes out. But, but oh. perhaps more importantly for, you know, those not on Patreon, they should at least I think understand why I'm playing a different character. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Shirley and Phil are both playing new character. Or, well, Shirley mm-hmm. I'm playing a new character. She's going back to Rebecca. Yeah. Uh, a, we s- a return character. We saw Rebecca last at the Wilkerson party. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that went very well for you guys, except Rob. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rebecca's back. Uh, Evie. Uh, I'm sorry, Evelyn is taking a hiatus for mm-hmm. uh, mental health reasons. <laughs> Same thing with Blake. Blake She's taking a mental health Blake uh, froze in combat this last game. Yes. Or last session. Um, and oh. that, as a soldier, is not a pleasant situation for you to be in. Yeah, it really uh, shook him. And since he knew that lives were depending upon him, if he freezes, it's not just his own he's risking. It's yeah. his uh, compatriots. Yeah. Um, so the two of them are taking a mental health break. We've got Major Sitwell that's already been introduced to some of the weirdness that's going on, so mm-hmm. why not continue on with him? And then there has been some recruiting. Um, so Rebecca has already been in the field with the, the men. 
Um, the other three of you have, or and and Sitwell has been on that one mission that was not great. I mean, it was a really rough <laughs> one where they essentially went to go and kill their own member or their own their former team member. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll that's where we're kind of picking up. Um, Rebecca, you are kind of called you are called into uh, Courtney Weld's office. Okay. Um, for a meeting to discuss the future of. Um, what they're calling the research team. Um, okay. The, the What we call the A-team. Um, around the office, they've been calling it the research team. Um, just recently, you've heard rumor that um, Weld has conscripted, sort of, gotten a hold of uh, what they're calling a commando team, which is a bunch of military guys that have seen some very Cthulhu mythos stuff. Okay. Um so they are going to use them in more um, a, a, a higher action <laughs> uh, events, whereas the the research team is going to be sent into places and times when information needs to be found. Okay. So um, you're going to be joining them as they're kind of their one of their occult experts. Okay. I think the only occult expert at this point. So then um, my question would be, if um, if were the the information gatherers, and I think I already know the answer to this. Are we going to intersect with it's the B team? Possible, but not likely. Okay. Because that that would be a large coordination that Matt doesn't want to do. <laughs> and that would be awkward for me to play two people at one time. <laughs> I well, we'll we'll get there. Uh, Phil, you have been contacted to go to London. We talked about this on your creation session. Yes. After we talked about your whole thing, um, you are being pulled because you know something. Uh, you saw something. Yeah, um, that's better. <laughs> and and they feel that your particular skills, especially in repair, might be helpful in the field. And you're no, you're no slouch in comp. Like you can handle your own in combat. You know how to fire a rifle. You know how to do that. Yeah. But also, more importantly, your ties to England are strong, and they know them. Yeah. Um, and that's important. Uh, you've heard rumor that in high society, there was the son. There was a lord who was recently found to be a Nazi collaborator. The, the, the official word is that he was killed by the Nazis. You realize there were Nazis in his home. Uh, that doesn't I, happen unless... The, how the do Lord I realize was, this? Well, be, because that, that's the rumor, and yeah. if you hear it from enough people, from okay. different sources, that rumor is probably truth. That's good evidence to support a claim. Yeah. So um, you've been kind of... You've been asked to meet with a gentleman named Courtney Weld. Yes. Um, you're told he's American, but he is working for uh, part of MI6 called Section D. He works for a specific department within Section D that uh, will be using your services at this point. Okay. Um, Roxy, uh, Charles Sitwell, Major Sitwell, has been asked to take up the um, kind of the security and safety of the research group you've you've also been spending some time at the office um you've met courtney weld he's a he is a soldier um he was an officer in world war one he's a, he's got a couple of years on you um but he also it's very clear that he has been through some things that have left him very changed um and so with that in mind uh he he would rather have a military mind with the research team to keep them apprised of what could be military situations that they could be okay. going into. Um, you performed decently well. You performed as well as you could in Germany, given the situation. Mm -hmm. um, so he, he would rather have a military presence that understands what they're getting into rather than just instead of grabbing a couple of, couple of corporals and hoping they do their job correctly. And then finally we have, uh, are we calling you B champs? Beecham, 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 John, Beecham. Okay, so uh, Beecham, you are an American. Um, uh, so John, you, uh, you, a few years ago, you attended Arkham, uh, mostly to go kind of after a psychology degree. You were going into, you knew you were going into the, the FBI. You wanted a college degree. Arkham is some of the best on the the um, East Coast. It would be what what would be considered Ivy League some years later. Um, they don't consider it Ivy League yet. That that league doesn't exist yet. 
but it's equal okay. to Harvard and Yale. Um, and so it, it's it's very prestigious. While you were there, you met a gentleman or a professor named Weld. Um, he taught some classes in anthropology and archaeology, which you excelled in and did well in, and you liked them, but it wasn't the thing you wanted to do. He encouraged you to go into archaeology, and just was never the thing you wanted. But you came, you became one of those students that he would have dinner parties and invite you, um, and and you would spend time with him and talk with him, even though you had not not anywhere near as much interest as he wanted in his department. He still wanted to spend time with you and, and held a lot of respect for you. Um, during that time, you did pick up a lot of stories from him about it's clear that he went through some things after the war. But during the war, he also went through some things um, that, that left him very um, changed. Um, and his stories have taught you a lot about a cult, which you picked up a little bit more here and there. So you've got a little bit of a cult base in your character but you're by no means an expert. So you just, you know that there are weird things that people believe in. And from his stories, there's weird things people believe in that might actually exist. Um, and that's always kind of interested you, but you're also more about tracking down the people that you want to find. And that, but yeah, that's so, what, yeah. So more from like the sociological, archeological aspect yeah. and real life experience. Yeah. You don't think that you've never seen anything and you hadn't thought that anything existed, but you also respect professor weld too much to think that all of his stories were just crap like okay. he's like yeah this one time we saw a werewolf and you're like right i mean maybe it was like this girl that was on some drugs or something like who knows but it's very clear that um he fully believes that there are weird things out there um <clears throat> you are contacted um you're you're currently um part of the fbi um you have been told that you have been released from your assignment, which is basically their way of saying they're releasing you from the FBI. You can come back when you're done with whatever you're doing, but you've been requested by um, British intelligence to come and assist them. Um, so you're kind of in a weird, you don't technically work for the FBI anymore, but you kind of do. Um, you're an active. You're you're essentially an active field agent um, for them, but working for the British. Um, so when you're invited to um, Courtney Weld's office in London, you realize that he's obviously the one that asked for you. And if he asked for you and pulled you away from your normal job in 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 England, or he pulled you away from your normal job to go to England during the war, then it has to do with the war and whatever's going on there's probably some sort of interest in you helping like deep inside you, whether or not that actually continues. We'll see. Um, so that all, does everybody feel comfortable with where we're at so far with mm -hmm. an understanding of why yeah. you're there? Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, so Courtney, um, is, uh, dressed in a pro like fine, a fine suit with a tie, um, uh, no hat, but he has one hanging on his like coat hook. Um, this is, uh, we'll say like May 1st, 1940, um, which whatever day of the week that was, it doesn't matter. It was, it's the very, very beginnings of May. Um, he invites you into his office. There's kind of a small round table. He takes a seat. Um, Major Sitwell, you recognize another woman or you recognize a woman, uh, Rebecca, who you know of um, from around the office. She's a researcher. She's, she's been in the field with the research team once before. Um, and she's pretty well respected. She's also a member of society in England. So she has some standing here within the, you know, the in, within Britain. Um, right. uh, Phil Alexander also recognizes Rebecca. Okay. He's probably been to a party or two, years ago like you go because you, you should yes you don't necessarily that's not necessarily your, your thing but yeah. it would look badly if you didn't show up to at least some of them no yeah i, I do the minimum maybe a, a schmidge more. yeah yeah and, and you know you've had you you go and drink and enjoy your food enjoy the time but it's not the thing that drives you so you yeah. know that she's very involved um you're also familiar um with major sitwell you've heard good stories just that he's dedicated and a good soldier. Which um, branch is? Uh, you're in the army, right, Roxy? Uh, I believe so. Yes. Yes, okay. because there's in the air force, there's no major, and then the navy's no, there's no major. So yeah, yeah. 
Um, so ma and major is a relatively high um, uh, rank. So it's like lieutenant, captain, major, colonel. So like it's he has been in command long enough to raise to that rank, um, and that says something. Um, and then there's obviously a uh, in, uh, uh, an American. So why don't we start with Shirley? Um, and describe the characters we're playing. Okay, um, I'm playing uh, Rebecca North Northcut. Uh, it's spelled N O R T H C O T E. Uh, I was raised um, in aristocracy, so you'll see her be very um, upstanding, um, very ladylike. But she has a very um, forthrightness about her. Um, she understands a little bit about a cult. You, you're actually the, pretty good on a cult. I would say more like, what do you physically look like? Oh, uh, physically. Um, That's up to you. My appearance opinion, yeah. is a 17. So, so you're pretty. I'm very pretty. <laughs> uh, color, now, um, Hair color, eye okay. color, height. <laughs> um, so five, five, uh, you know, brownish hair, hazel eyes, um, not skinny, but fit. Um, since I don't know what my background is. Um, and I mean, that's about all I, okay, that's fine. all I look like. That's fine. And dressed nicely in a dress. Yeah, I would, the 1940s, so I would have, um, not very, very upper crust, but, uh, it was a wool suit. It would be a wool, um, jacket and skirt, okay. um, with the, you know, the, the pumps that they wore at the time. And sure. then, um, a, um, probably a silken blouse or, okay. you know, but nicely ap uh, appointed yes. and, Okay. Um, what about you, Phil? So Alexander um, is going to be wearing military standard military uniform. Dress uniform would be probably appropriate for okay. a meeting like this. Yeah. All right. Well, then my dress yeah. uniform. Um, he is of average uh, appearance, um, just in terms of like attractiveness or the appearance uh, stat, um, and looks um, Scottish um, for whatever that might mean <laughs> half your face is painted blue yeah yeah definitely um probably brown hair you know blue eyes that's pretty common okay. um relatively pale complexion um he's um based on his size and his strength um in his build um he's probably a little taller maybe just a smidge taller than, than average um which so like six, six. One, six one six one yeah let's we'll say six one okay um and um you know based kind of on the on on the build you know he's you know got a little bit of muscle mass on him like he's not like you know super strong or anything but like just to get the he has a size of 65 and a strength of 65 and being in the military um i don't want to he'd have a gut so yeah um yeah. that's kind of that's kind of where that build is coming from um uh and so with any documentation have been provided prior to this meeting um no you were no? you were told that you were being sent here and and that you are assigned to them now and that's about as much as you know okay so he would probably not arrive carrying anything then okay um not anything that's not a part of his dressing uniform i mean okay I don't know oh. if that's a, a weapon would be part of that or not. No, no not to Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, how about Charles Sitwell, Major Sitwell? Uh, Major Sitwell is tall, about six two, and lean, uh, well kempt. Uh, at this meeting, uh, he would probably be in his dress uniform. Okay. He uh, dresses appropriately for the occasion, whatever it may be. Um, his hair is a little wavy. And the color of, you know, like a, um, a dark auburn or a rusty color. And he has green eyes. And he is still fairly young. He's not yet hit 30. So um, he is very, very serious, very, very businesslike. 
um, to have reached the rank that he is at his age. Okay. And how about um, John? Okay. Uh, so I am playing a character named Beecham Harrogate, okay. spelled B E A U C H A M H A R R O G A T. Uh, and he is tall and lean, not uh, to an extent that he doesn't have any strength or anything to that, but more of a kind of a agile look to, to him. It's about six foot one, uh, wearing a dark gray suit with a black tie. Okay. He has dark brown hair, uh, a little bit of a wave to it as if uh, he has had a haircut, but it's been a while. And so, but other than that, he's well shaved and there is a polish to his shoes as well. Okay. So he has a very nice appearance, but it looks like perhaps uh, hasn't been really taking care of himself too much uh just too busy is kind of the opinion i get from him okay. ever so often if there's something you handed to him that he needs to read he'll pull out a pair of glasses that he kind of troubles over you know to read and then puts them up whenever he's done okay and that's pretty much him all right um and then courtney is uh has tea brought in almost immediately um and ha doesn't wait for anybody to take any, just grabs his, pours his, and then sets it back on the tray and leaves it for self-serve. Um, uh, and he says, uh, he, he hands out folders to the four of you. Um, he says, uh, so I have been in charge of this division since its inception. Um, I was brought here for my knowledge base regarding um, strange phenomena. Um, I brought a team with me and the British intelligence have left me to do my job as best I can, which I appreciate. Uh, unfortunately, the, the main field team that I had um, has been through some rough times as of late. Um, Rebecca and Major, uh, you have both met them. Um Mr. Blake, uh, I'm sorry, Corporal, Corporal? Uh, yeah, that sounds... Uh... Corporal Blake has um, stepped away. Um, he's concerned about his performance in the field. Um, I still have a great deal of faith in him, but he doesn't have the same faith in himself. Um, uh, yeah, it's Corporal. Um, the other member that's stepping away is um evelyn october um evelyn evelyn's an american who doesn't have ties to the war at this point um and has seen her uncle who was a member of this team as well lose it in the field and be sent home to rest and recuperate um further rebecca or i'm sorry evelyn has been studying quite a bit and um as you'll learn hopefully not too quickly. Uh, the more you know about what we're going to talk to you about today, the harder your mind has to work to deal with the day to day of living. And I know that sounds terrifying and it should. Um, I find it terrifying myself, but uh, I'm here to protect the world at large because someone has to. I don't put myself in the field anymore for similar reasons to Mr. Blake. Um, I found it to be overwhelming at times. So this, this, uh, assignment that each of you have been pulled for is voluntary, but I think that you are the best options that we have. Um, Rebecca, your knowledge of occult matters and your ties to society and England itself are great, um, a great help um and i i think that those are going to help us mr um i'm sorry not mr La lieutenant drummond your knowledge and ability to see things outside of just the tools in front of you plus your honesty in reporting what you saw in the air the night of a party um at a a certain former nobleman's estate 
that that forthrightness and your intelligence are going to be a great asset for this research team. Major Sitwell, you have handled yourself in combat with things that are unexplainable um, in a great, in, in good fashion, and you still hold, I'm pretty sure, healing wounds from that, healing physical mm-hmm. wounds, and I don't hear a word of complaint from you. And uh, Mr. Harrogate, I... I knew I know that while archaeology and anthropology was never your interest, you're good at it. And frankly, I need a familiar face to ground what we're doing a little bit more. Um, I know it sounds strange that I not going into the field, I would need something to ground it. But as I said, the more I talk about the things we f- we're going to be dealing with, the more this world will seem less grounded than it is now. And I think Miss Miss uh, I'm sorry, Major Sitwell and Miss Northcutt can tell you that their limited experience has left them a little shaken. At least is that would would that be fair? Yes. And Major. Oh yes, yes for sure. Mister Drummond, why don't why don't you tell us what you saw in the air? To explain the situation, um, you're free. The, 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 the people here have clearance to know what you were working on, at least in the broader t- sense. Uh, of course. Um, so there is um, research going on uh, in uh, the Empire um, to detect um, incoming bombers and and such um, from a distance to help give uh, warning and tracking and, and these types of things. Um, on the night that you mentioned uh, previously, sir, um, something showed up on our detection system and um, it seemingly came uh, out of uh, nowhere to some degree. Um, and it was... Uh, an isolated thing. Usually, our detection systems they're, they're significant enough that we can track individual planes. Um, and uh, as you're all familiar with, um, when uh, they come, they usually don't come um, in isolation. So to have uh, multiple, or to have just one thing show up was um, of note, and it was something that was showing up such that we could actually go out and perceivably, uh, conceivably, uh, visually identify it and we stepped out um there was something in the air um i perceived it as a very large thing um perhaps even the size of of a bomber um but it um appeared to have the form of an organic being um it appeared to have wings that you know flapped I'm sure that there was something in the air that was obscuring my my vision of of what exactly it was being seen there, but that's as best as it seems that I can describe what I actually observed. Um, And it um, was flying away from England, so it was confusing because at the particular location that we were observing this from, we would be expecting things to be coming in towards England if it were a a plane or a a bomber from Germany and that type of a thing. So it was... um, Exceedingly um, odd and remains unexplained. Ms. Northcutt, uh, the night he speaks of is the night you were at a party when one of the hosts of the party left on a flying beast. That beast was tracked on radar until it disappeared over the ocean. I see. Do you remember seeing uh, Nalani Wilkerson fly off or were you inside during that time? I don't recall seeing her fly off. Okay. I was inside, I believe, uh, at that time causing a destruction. Um, what you saw, Lieutenant, is called a Shantak. And while that may not mean anything to you now, and I can't say that I know a lot about them, they are large winged creatures. Um similar to the wyvern of mythology, that they have two legs and two wings, um, very long necks, 
Um, they are creatures that serve evils. She's kind of a quizzical look. Doesn't that directly question it? Uh, Major, um, perhaps you would like to explain the situation you found yourself in in, in Germany. It was uh, a bit of a mess. We, um, when we dropped in, we had a crew of, we had the, the primary, the primary team, um, that I was escorting, uh, with Miss October and Blake and the Frenchman. And we, when we dropped in, we did get separated, uh, but, uh, we had a team of about 30 or 40 men that were with us and, uh, I was with some of them, but we ended up regrouping with, uh, I ended up regrouping with the main team and we made our entrance um, into the country and happened upon, we were traveling by night to uh, try to stay unseen because there wasn't a whole lot of places to hide, but we found a shack near um, a farm. And during one of the watches, we saw the Nazis, um, attack the farm essentially and drag out the inhabitants and uh, mercilessly execute execute them and then make preparations it seemed to set the entire uh, home on fire. We engaged the German soldiers and were able to deal with them and there were a couple uh, refugees that we had to send on their way because we didn't have any means to to really help them or facilitate getting them somewhere safe as we were not headed into a safe place but we made our way to um, the city the name of which I can't remember at the moment and to get on the train as we believe that there was a relic on the train and we were met with some pretty harrowing beasts that attacked us. And, and um, the, the maniacal professor that was there that was, it turned out, controlling these beasts. And uh, it, was, it was an experience that I would not like to live through again. But we did, we did survive. But uh, as you see, some of our number have decided to turn back after after what they experienced and uh, where they found themselves mentally afterwards. Um, it's our belief that the attack on the home you saw, it was in no way related to what you saw on the train, which is a startling understanding to begin with. Um, mm -hmm. The Nazis are still calling their... Um, their population for what they view as weaknesses. Yeah. Um, the creatures you fought, uh, as I understand them from the reports I have from uh, Corporal Blake, were um, hidden behind featureless steel plates and had extremely large claws on their hands and were resistant to gunfire at best, mm -hmm. if not fully ignoring it. Um that I think that several of you took quite a bit of damage. Um, the the professor in the train was once a member of the research team. I've spoken of loyalty from to from two of you to directly to England. You both two of you hold the blood of noble families. One of you is a major in His Majesty's service. And your loyalty couldn't be questioned in that. And one of you is an American who I know personally, and I don't question his loyalty to the job he agrees to do. Having said that, this gentleman was an American and his loyalty was to science and understanding, not to this country or to what was right. Their science from this particular group has more to do with esoteric knowledge and magic mm. and places that should not be seen or experienced 
and he chose to go down that route very quickly to the point that he not only deceived his own friends, but turned on them at what I would consider a very bad moment. So having said that, um, I think we, uh, the only one we have left is, uh, Miss Northcutt, uh, could you explain what you experienced at the party? When we arrived there, and uh, Wilkerson presented himself um, with his wife, yes, um, Nolani, and um, upon making small talk, uh, there was a diversion created, and we found our way down into the basement where they had been holding people in cells. And then in a back room, there were actual Nazi officers and occult artifacts. Um, During this time, I tried to create a diversion. And uh, one of our team members, Carlos, got into a verbal altercation with Nolani and Wilkerson. Most, yeah, sure. And um, basically... He's very, um, I'm not sure, violent, <laughs> especially when um, when there are bad things afoot. And um, Nalani fled. Um, he, she was with Aster, one of our other members of the team, all evening um, and bewitched him in some sort of way. Um and then when things started to go bad, she fled, and Wilkerson fled to the upstairs. Uh, later, they found him, and he had hanged himself. But it, from what was told by uh, the people that knew him, it felt like him, but it didn't feel like it was really him. So I believe it to be a... Like, it wasn't him. It was like a, a doppelganger or clone or... Yes. Another monster. In 1925, I spent uh, about a year with a group of people. Um, one of which was Captain Reginald Winthrop Wilkerson III, who was at the time the second son of the Earl of Sandwich. When his father passed away some a few years later, became the Earl of Sandwich. I watched Captain Wilkerson die under the Sphinx. And by when I say under, I mean beneath it in Cairo or in, in Egypt. Um, when I knew Reginald, he was an upstanding British soldier. He had his fancies and enjoyed his safaris but I never could have imagined him turning his back on his home country. When he was resurrected, they did something to him. His wife, Nalani, is actually a woman named Nidicris. I've described... Uh, it, you've heard the description of two creatures so far. I need you to be prepared for what I'm about to say. Nalani is... Nidicris, and Nidicris was around during the second dynasty in Egypt in about 900 BC. Nidicris was an ancient sorceress, and they resurrected her, they, a cult of a creature called Nyarlathotep, resurrected her to put forth his agenda on Earth. My group, after I left it for mental health reasons, stopped that, but never found Nidicris. She has joined the Nazi party. Nidicris left on a Shantak, as we've discussed. Nidicris and Dr. Thomas, who is now dead, serve a group called... The Black Sun. There are two occult groups of note within the Nazis. The Black Sun is a part 
of the SS, which means that they have full access to any SS resource and have SS soldiers and officers in their ranks. The Ditoten that you saw is just one of their tools. There are others that I hear are far worse. The creature that was fought in Germany. The other group is called Noctwolf. Um, the Noctwolf used to be part of the Black Sun, but through some ingenuity within their own ranks, a woman named Nina Wolf broke from the Black Sun and created her own group. While the Black Sun's knowledge is based in esoteric understandings and magic, Noctwolf is based in applying those to science. They have created things like uh, guns that will blow holes in walls um, and things that will move objects without ever touching them, gently move them um, through some sort of waveform. I don't understand it. Both of these groups are at odds with each other. The only thing that's keeping the Noctwolf alive and not being destroyed by the Black Sun is that Hitler has taken a personal interest in their work. They both work to find ancient sites of the lost city of Atlantis. And while you may scoff and think that that's a, a load of hokum, I can show you the research and I can show you artifacts from it. It is old, it is ancient, and it is not necessarily all human. There are creatures that exist beyond humanity. That is an understanding that we must grasp at this point. Now, I'm handing out a lot of information to you. This is the point where you have to decide if you are in. I feel like, Rebecca, you have made that choice. Um, Major, I feel like you have, have either made that choice or you're very close to making that choice. If I'm incorrect, please let me know. No, I'm committed. Lieutenant, I don't know where you sit, but I also feel that your loyalty to the Empire holds you to a certain level of uh, responsibility. I would prefer you choose this because you want to help, not because you have that responsibility. How do you feel about proceeding with this work? I don't know that I believe or agree with some of these statements about situations that you've stated thus far. I don't know that I've had enough time to, or enough data to make um, some of those determinations. Um, but it sounds like this research team is involved in um, preventing these uh, divisions of the of the Nazi regime. Is that fair? It is. Um, and so, if my services. Um, will be valuable um, in uh, preventing um, the inhumanities that the Nazis are Im imparting upon this world, then um, I would agree with my superiors that this is a place that I can make a good uh, impact. Good. Uh, your skepticism is admirable. Don't hold on to it too hard because that can cause your mind to have troubles. I've seen men who believe that up is up and down is down is that is all there is because that's what they have fact for who have seen the things that we have seen. And that little bit is all it took to crack them. So be skeptical, please, but be mindful would be my suggestion. Yes, sir. And uh, Mr. Harrogate, um, this is not your country, nor is it mine, and this is not perhaps your fight at the moment, but I, as I said, I feel that your, your personal abilities within anthropology and archaeology are going to assist. We're looking for ancient things, or, and we're dealing with ancient things. It may not be your first passion, but I feel like you have a great deal to offer 
do you have interest in in assisting? Absolutely. I, and I do want to say that this is our enemy. I mean, I, I'm an FBI agent. That's why I was. And our, you know, I took down mobsters. And most recently, the FBI has been involved with investigating espionage from Germany. And specifically, I mean, I, if you haven't been paying attention to the news back in America, just a few months back, we had members of the German Socialist Party marching through in formation down the streets in New York in uniform. We've been arresting people for espionage, working for Germany. We might not be in the fight officially yet, but this is definitely our enemy. And an enemy like this, it's a big, it's a, it's a massive thing. It's not, it's bigger than the mob. And so my part to play in it, I'm a researcher and I'm an investigator first and foremost. It sounds like I might be in the right place. I thought so as well. Good. Um, you'll find in your folders some notes. They are incomplete. I don't wish to overwhelm you at this point. Um, they will get you a little bit uh, started a little bit. Rebecca, some of this may be re repeated for you, but again, it, it bears reading over. Yes. Um, there, as I said, there's a second there, as I'm sure that some of you are aware, there's a second team, um, that we have just brought into the fold. I'm going to say I've, I've taken them. They don't have much of a choice in the matter. Um, but they are all members of the military. They are a group of commandos that are good at what they do, but have found their way stumbling into weird situations. Um, there may be a point in time where I send one or more of you with them to help them, um, but they also don't understand what they're dealing with yet. Um, you now, at this point, have more information about what we're calling the mythos than they do at all. So, with that in mind, um, we have something powerful that there are pieces of in the world that were broken up at, at one point. They all belong to, belonged to Atlantis. The Nazis are after them. Both, both sides of their occult are after them. Um, as we figure out where we can find them, as that's translated and interpreted, I will probably be sending you places. However, a lot of things will come across our desks that will be potential for what you can do. Most of the time, your activities are at your discretion. If I tell you that something is something from Atlantis has popped up, I would expect that you'll probably head that direction. But if the Nazis are doing something strange in Norway and there's been a weird, a, a weird series of break-ins in France, you'll choose where you go. That's up to you. Um, we did send, we had another member of the party, uh, of the research team, um, Carlos, as Miss Northcutt mentioned, um, Carlos is a Spanish nationalist who was run out of his country during the, uh, civil war. He had been working for the Americans. Now he works for the Brits. Um, he's a skilled aviator and is, was, um, terrifying when it came to what he was willing to do to correct things very blunt and uh, find fine instrument um, for that he during a uh, investigation in France on some stolen items from an archaeological dig um, was caught in an explosion and now sits in a coma so he may join you as well when that ha when he gets well if he gets well um, you will, the four of you will be working with a French gentleman named uh, Aster Fournier. He's a French intelligence officer. Um, he is currently afflicted with something. Um, he was struck by a magic event at the party that, that Miss Northcutt mentioned, mm. and it has left an impact on him. He's been healed from the physical damage and whatever it implanted in him. 
but yes, uh, Lieutenant, I can see your eyes. Um, there are creatures that will implant themselves in you. It's believed. Yeah, parasites. It's believed Sir. that. Oh, you. We don't. You don't need to salute me. I'm not your sir. You can call me Mr. Weld, Professor Weld, if you really want to, or you can just call me Courtney. Um, there is the the magic that hit him left a growing creature that would eventually have turned into a copy of Reginald Wilkerson, which leads us to believe that Wilkerson, though his body was found hung still exists out there somewhere in one shape or form or another. <laughs> so it's a lot to digest. I think that uh, if you have questions, I would prefer to answer them or start to answering them now. And what I can't answer, I can find. But there's a lot here. Is the major leading this team or is this team a democracy of some sort? Um, Aster is our intelligence expert so when it comes to any situation where you're going to have to be in an espionage situation i would suggest deferring to him so it would not be the major when it comes to straight military or security matters the major should be listened to that is not a directive i'm saying that's what i would do i would say that the party is best led by the one that takes charge. And if that means the group of you talk about it and somebody makes a decision, that's great. But in the end, I need a report on my desk. I need to know what happened. So it would be We're all members of the same body here. Yes. So that it would also be best if we didn't hold things back from one another because it's possible that one or more of you may not come back from any one mission or may not come back mentally whole. Does that answer your question, Lieutenant? Yes, Mr. Will. Any other questions? I have none at this time. Okay. All right. Uh, well. Um, when when will we be meeting uh, Mr. Astor? Mr. Fournier is Fournier? Um, healing and will need probably another week or two. Mm. He... Uh, Major Sitwell, it was well settled to handle what she what he went through. Aster is not of the same cloth. It's not that he's weak, it's that his body just isn't built to take a shot and keep walking. Major Sitwell is. Ah, I see. And And the beasts that we were up against were not, not what the average even intelligence officer is probably used to. Correct. Um, they might as well have been putting steel beams through people. That's the kind of damage they were doing. Oh, goodness. Okay, excellent. Read over the information I've given you. Um, we'll, I'm happy to discuss anything you want. I have other um, managers around that can discuss things with you. Within the office, anyone that can help you should. So feel free to ask outside of the office. Of course, this is all very top secret and should not be discussed. Does that all make sense? Of course. Yes. Excellent. Yes. I think that that'll do it. Um, and I think that's a great place for us to end tonight. I think we had a solid introduction. <laughs> yeah. Introduction. Uh, we have other podcasts out there and you guys should be listening to them. They are available over at nerdsdom.com, and we will talk to you guys next week. And that will do it for us tonight on the Nerds Domain Presents Masks of Nyarlathotep. Remember, you can email us at nerdsdomain at gmail.com or find us over on Facebook and Twitter at facebook.com slash nerdsdomain and twitter.com slash nerdsdomain. You can also check out our site at nerdsdom.com. Be sure to sign up for our newsletter while you're there. You can head over to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. We want to thank Passion Nerdly for our music. 
Don't forget, you can support us at patreon.com slash nerdsdomain and check out our shirts at TeePublic.